good morning everyone so as you can see currently in the car this morning lids and i woke up and it was a really miserable day it was really overcast and we were just like let's just have a lazy day and then out of nowhere all of a sudden the sun's shining it's absolutely beautiful and at the moment we're literally in the prime spring condition the bluebells are out in full force everything's starting to blossom it's just absolutely stunning and on the private estate that we live on there's a woodland that has some insane bluebells to display so we thought let's make the most of this opportunity and head out and take some photos it also kind of ties in with something that i've wanted to do on my channel for a little while which is start like some more fashion series and start sharing with you some of my favorite items so what i've decided to do in this video is share with you my three favorite transitional spring jackets that was a little bit of a tongue twister so we are going to go out and i'm going to shoot a photo for my instagram account which i have a really crazy vision for and i'm not sure whether i'm going to be able to execute it but fingers crossed it comes out okay i'm going to go along the lines of bringing the outside in and try to like photoshop that and make it come to a reality and of course spring and bluebell sit very much aligned so to have those incorporated into a three favorite spring jacket it just kind of ties the whole creative and whole message together and then in today's video i'll also go back home we'll sit down in the office and i'll discuss with you my three favorite jackets and the reason why i like them and why i think they're great transitional pieces and then for those of you that watched my vlog last week I think it went out every other Sunday Lids and I have decided to order a roast from a local restaurant to us so we ordered that yesterday and so we're going to be enjoying a roast again this week which I'm so excited about it's such a highlight of our Sunday so that's gonna be great but Lids is just currently outside on her bike uh, we're also gonna be doing uh, a photo for her as well so I'm gonna get out of this really warm car and uh, get busy shooting so let's go looks so beautiful where the light comes through all of the trees it looks insane Lydia has her bike for a prop I've got this stool here for a prop a iPhone that's going to be recording some BTS for a TikTok this tripod's for this camera for the vlog this camera on a tripod here is for the Instagram photo of course we have ourselves <laughs> to feature within that content so um, there's going to be lots going on but it should be good fun and uh, hopefully we get some really beautiful photos so we shall see i have tried to shoot in here once before actually last year and i didn't end up using the pictures because i couldn't make them come to life in the way in which they deserved so it'll be interesting to see how i do this time <laughs> So, sorry about that, whilst we were out shooting, the battery on this camera actually went flat, but just to keep you up to speed, after we'd shot the picture of me on the stool in the middle of the bluebells, I then went and grabbed a clothes rail that I had in the car, and then one at a time I put the jackets on hangers onto the rail, and then I took a photo of each jacket situated within that woodland, I then removed the jacket and the rail, and then I'm gonna merge those two photos together and create an image that looks like the jackets are just floating on a coat hanger in the middle of the woodland so it could look pretty cool if i can pull it off the initial issue that i'm going to see with that particular shoot is as the hanger actually comes around the rail obviously the rail cuts off some of the hangers hook which means that i'm going to have to like part by part fill that in to make it look like a complete hanger so as long as i can get that sorted it should be relatively straightforward i thought it would add a nice little dynamic to the shoot and make up for a nice blog post so finished filming that i think lids is currently filming linen wardrobe essentials yeah she's going to be filming one of those which i'm sure will be very cool and then we're going to go and shoot another photo for lydia actually and that will be a really successful day it'll probably give us a few hours to sort of just like settle down before our roast arrives at around about 4 p.m today we're winning so far. So is this one beneath me as well, look at her. This is what Sunday should look like, isn't it, Lummy? Hey? <laughs> if Sunday was a cat, it would be you. Although, I think all cats are like this, aren't they? So Lids and I went to the local shop yesterday to pick up some groceries and we did one of our favorite things, which is get a fresh loaf. This little bad boy here is some sort of like bloomer, I'm not sure what. I'm going to uh, tuck into some balsamic vinegar and olive oil. We're currently using the balsamic vinegar from a Fortnum & Mason's 
uh, Christmas hamper. It's what I love about those Fortnum and Mason hampers. Like, you just get some really good quality stuff. As you can see, there's only a little gap there, you can see we are literally nearly out of this stuff because it tastes so good. I'm a bit of a savage as well when it comes to uh, balsam because I will literally have that straight. Like the oil is just like, I just feel obligated to have a bit of oil, but really I could just drink this stuff from the bottle. <laughs> So just getting the first couple of bits ready. Oh yes, beauty, hot. Michelin star Gordon's back at it again. You seen what I've done? No. I've done bread, hummus, olives, crisps, and balsam. Because I'm a gangster. And you're gonna fill yourself up when we're getting a roast in 40 minutes. Perfect. I'm not gonna have anything. Oh. Otherwise I won't eat my rice. That was lovely. I do enjoy a nice fresh loaf. You probably heard actually in that, that clip, but Liz has just mentioned that our roast dinner actually arrives in half an hour, <laughs> which is kind of scary. So I'll just get some of bread, but it was a starter. That's what I'm going to say to myself. I'm going to start going through the editing process with you. It's not going to be too like heavy, so I'm not going to let this run for ages, but I'm just going to show you the general gist of what it is that I'm doing, and then I'll show you a finished result. So don't worry, you're not just about to watch like half an hour of editing, okay? Chill. <laughs> hey Siri, play some of the UK Top 40. Playing the Top 40 songs. has arrived. Yes. No, a Sunday roast isn't something that you've never seen before, but doesn't that just look delightful? So I've gone for all of the veg and given lids almost all of the cauliflower cheese because she's not keen on the veg. Roasty's looking on point. It's just a glorious sight. Makes me very, very happy. So we're gonna tuck into that, enjoy the garden views. Can't believe how lucky we've got with the weather today. It's literally like blue sky. So nice. It's actually reminded me I need to uh, get some food on the bird feeder because they go through that like you would not believe. <laughs> crows. <laughs> Don't shut up those crows. You're living your best Sunday life, aren't you, darling? <laughs> Before we lose the natural light outside, I thought I would quickly take a moment to talk to you about my three selected spring transitional jackets that I mentioned earlier on in this video. So what makes a good spring jacket? Well, I would say that probably a jacket that's lightweight, functional, and maybe a little bit water resistant. Now, I know you're thinking, the jackets that you can see behind me here don't look very water resistant, and you would be right. But not every jacket that you're transitioning into spring needs to be water resistant because, believe it or not, it doesn't rain all the time. And although here in the UK we do have very fluctuating weather, nine times out of ten the weatherman is pretty spot on now and uh, we know when we're going to be getting a little bit of rain or whether at least it's going to be a bit vulnerable to that. So these jackets are more aimed at those sort of like nicer warmer days or at least those sort of drier days. Rather than talk about each piece individually. I think that they all share the same key elements that I look for out of a spring jacket. So first thing I'd look for when wearing a spring jacket would be of course the weight of the fabric. Is it really heavy? Is it going to be too warm? Or is it really lightweight? And Is it going to be too thin and slightly maybe more of a summer jacket? Um, so I think a mid-weight kind of like material, something that you want to make sure that you get out of the jacket. I'd also say a mid-crop as well. Obviously this is very style dependent, but if you're somebody that has a similar style to myself and you like things to be quite tailored and fit nicely. I'm not saying that oversized or 
too tight, doesn't fit nicely, but for my style, that's obviously why I like it. Very diplomatic of me. A nice fitting jacket is really important. So I like to make sure that the silhouette of the jacket complements my physique, perhaps a slight taper in at the waist to really exaggerate the broadness of the shoulders. Of course, I don't want to have a long length jacket because an overcoat would be, of course, more of a winter, autumn type jacket. So a nice mid-length jacket with a nice mid-weight fabric would make for a great spring choice. I'd also say that for the functionality of the jacket, because the weather does fluctuate a little bit, you could literally be in the sun and the sun goes behind a cloud and the temperature just feels like it just drops. And so you wanna quickly chuck a jacket on. If you wanna make sure that you keep your hair looking good or you don't want the faff of chucking on unzipped or unbuttoned hoodie or top, then of course a zip or a button up jacket is fundamental because it means that you can just pop it on and whip it off and it's just nice and easy. And I think that if something's easy and convenient, you're more likely to do it. We have, all three jackets with an easy accessible application, I was gonna say. What a weird word to put on a jacket. They are all very functional. Um, you'll also notice that they all have pockets on them. Something that I just love in jackets is just to have places to put things because I hate holding things in my hand. I'm not one of these people that can walk around with my keys and my phone in my hand. Lastly, you'll pick up that all of these jackets are quite light tones. Now, I wouldn't say a spring jacket has to be light, but personally, as we transition into the more summer, the lighter months, I like to wear lighter tones and in the winter I wear very like deep earthy and darker tones so a lot lighter jackets just seem to complement and work really well with chinos and white t-shirts I kind of start to include lighter tones into my wardrobe as we come into spring and then of course those items can still be worn throughout the summer. The three jackets today you can see are relatively light. In terms of the diversability of these jackets going into the evenings, it all depends on what you're doing that evening, but I'd say that these jackets could all be worn in most instances from being out and about in the day and then perhaps going out in the evening to a relatively low-key restaurant or going down to meet your friends for some drinks at a bar. I think all of these would be suitable. Certainly the denim jacket works really nicely. Of course, if you're going to somewhere a little bit more upmarket, then perhaps these jackets might need to take a back seat. I do quite like this herringbone style jacket. Herringbone, I feel, is like quite a lovely sort of like smart classic print as it is. So this design actually, I would say, could work quite nicely in a, perhaps a more formal environment, but you might be pushing it a little bit. All in all, I'd say that the most important things when it comes to spring jackets is the size, the weight, and the functionality of the jacket because it is a jacket that you're gonna be taking on and off a lot. So I will be leaving a link to all of these products. If they are not available, I'll do a link to something as similar as possible. I'm gonna chuck these things back in the wardrobe. I'm gonna get busy cracking on with some editing. And then this evening, I think hopefully you're gonna sit down and watch some more Louis Theroux. I know that those series are quite old, but some of the documentaries that he's covering are just so crazy there fascinating yeah i think we're going to sit downstairs and uh, watch a little bit more of him because i think there's like there's a lot i if one part of my brain is saying 19 and the other one's saying 40 there's a lot of louis Theroux documentaries that we have not watched that we need to catch up on so um, i think we're going to be doing a little bit of that this evening because it's dad's birthday yeah. we're going to be doing the zoom call now I know. you ready yeah what have you been doing I see a little cheeky Bulgari bag. Oh, that's for a different video. Is it Bulgari or Bulgari? Bulgari. I, I mean, me personally, I, I like the way it sounds when you say Bulgari, but it's apparently it's Bulgari. Okay. But my, my, my mouth always wants to say Bulgari. But it's Bulgari. Yeah, apparently. Okay. Today is my dad's birthday. So we're currently doing a family Zoom competition. He loves it. We're painting our kitchen. Oh wow! <laughs> We're all winning. Hi <laughs> oh, guys. Yeah. Hi guys. Too excited. Mm. Uh, uh, fictional characters: Dad and me. All the French. She's in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> it's Game of Thrones. List them off. Lady Ali. Wendelaine. From Wallace and Gromit. Wendelaine. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the French. <laughs> Huh? Wendelin, I thought you said. No, Wendelin from Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> 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 Wendelin. 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 Wendel
just wrapped up this evening's family slash all right she's very disappointed in me and lydia this evening because we didn't win did we no we came very close if ash hadn't cheated we could yeah. have won so it's my dad's birthday it was the family quiz and my younger brother was the quiz master and guess who won I'm not saying any dodginess was going on i'll let you guys judge the situation from the little information you know but he was quiz master and he won mm. and he disallowed a few answers didn't he and he allowed a few of his own answers along the way but it would not be fair of me to pass judgment because he's not here to defend himself but Cheater. He, he cheated <laughs> we are just about to sit down and watch an episode of louis theroux and um, we're gonna do i know my love we probably only got about an hour until we should really be getting into bed because it's a school night for us yeah so we've got a busy day tomorrow in the office so um so yeah thank you for watching i hope you did enjoy this one if you are not subscribed and you do watch my videos don't forget to click that subscribe button so you get these notifications coming through when i post because i'm not the most consistent youtuber um that will hopefully change soon as well so we'll try and get into a bit of a routine where i post a little bit more regularly on set dates as opposed to just here there and everywhere so yeah that's something that's on a work in progress and that's not the first time i've said that so we shall see <laughs> take care peace